Fundamental theorem for line integrals. Notice this, it says let C be a piecewise smooth curve with parameterization RT, where T is between A and B. Let F be a function of two or three variables with first order partial derivatives that exist and are continuous on C. Then the gradient of F dotted DR is equal to F of RB minus F of RA. Now what's really going on here is when I see the gradient of F, I'm talking about a gradient vector field. And if it's a gradient vector field, it's a conservative vector field. And that's what we're talking about here. So this means when I have a conservative vector field, if I can find my, my potential function, I can just plug in the, be, the end point and the beginning point, and that will give me uh, my answer for my integral. And now keep in mind, what does this integral really mean? This is the integral of f dot dr because a, a gradient of f is actually a vector field. And that vector field is what I call f. So this is f dot dr. So this could refer to circulation. It could, it could refer to work. So those are the components of what this is. So now what we're going to do is look below here what this says. It says calculate the integral of, of c of f dot dr where fxyz is equal to 2x ln of y comma x squared over y plus z squared comma 2yz. And c is a curve with parameterization rt equaling t squared t and t where t is between 1 and e. Okay, now this says, the part A says, without the fundamental theorem of line integrals, it wants us to find the integral, to calculate the integral without it. That's what it's saying. It says calculate the integral, and it says without using the fundamental theorem of line integrals, for line integrals. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do part A, and we got to come up with, we have our RT and stuff, and we're just going to plug everything in. So then, the integral of f dot, now let me write this out completely here, f of rt dotted r prime t dt. So that would be our formula without using the potential function. So we're going to do it this way here. So we're going to have to take that derivative of rt, which is going to be r prime t equaling 2t comma 1 comma 1. So there's my r prime t. Then I got to plug in all my t's for my variables x, y, and z. So then for my x, it's going to be t squared. For my y, it's going to be t. And for my z, it's going to be t. So I have 2x. So that's going to be 2t squared and ln of t, because my y is t, and that's comma. And then for the next one, it's going to be t to the fourth, because it's t squared squared. And then that's over y, which is t, plus t squared, because z is t. And then for the last one, it's going to be 2 t times t, which is t squared, because both y and z are t. Now we can clean this up just a little here. Can't I? Yes, this is the only thing I can clean up for this whole problem, at least for this part, I'm sorry. 2t squared ln of t comma t cubed plus t squared comma 2t squared. So there's our f with my rt plugged into it, and that's what we kind of needed for this first piece. So that's this piece here. And then we now have our r prime t, which is here. All right, so now we're just going to plug everything in then. So this is the integral, oops, our bounds, which they gave us here. So that's 1 to e of my f, which is 2t squared ln of t, comma, t cubed plus t squared comma, oops, comma, 2t squared dotted with r prime t there, and that's here, 
two t comma one comma one dt. All right, so now we're just gonna plug everything in here, or multiply everything in, then plug it all in. But anyways, one to e. So it's gonna be two t squared ln of t times two t. So that would be four t cubed ln of t. And then for the middle one and the last one here, they're just both multiplied by one. So it's just, I'm just gonna rewrite those because that's what it is. Now remember, we're doing dot product, we're adding those as well after we times them. So that's gonna be three cubed plus t squared. And the last one, I don't like my t, t squared. And the last one's gonna be plus two t squared. And then I can, uh, don't forget my dt. And then I'm going to now combine like terms if possible. So I don't have too much here. One to e. That's going to be four t cubed ln of y or ln of y ln of t. Still looking at the original. And then that's going to be these t squareds I can put together after the I write the t cubed down. And that's going to be three t squared. dt. All right, so there we go. So that's a nice little setup there. And now we're going to integrate these. Now this part right here is going to be integration by parts. I'm going to have to pick my u and my v. Or the tabular method would be easier for that piece there. The other two are just simple polynomial power rules for integrals. And if I asked you to do this by hand, that would take a little bit of time to integrate that first piece there. Actually, my u would be ln of t, and my dv would be 4t cubed uh, dt. So that's how that piece would have to be done. Um, now, my answer for this one turns out to be e to the fourth plus e cubed minus 1. So there would be the answer for this one here. So now what I'm going to do is I want you to look at this problem here. And I want you to think of it in terms of part B now. It says using the fundamental theorem of line integrals, um, I want us to come up with the calculation for this integral. Now that means we're going to use this piece here. Now we'd have to find the potential function. And I did that in a previous video for this same vector field. And that f is here. There's the f we came up with. So that's x squared ln of y plus y squared plus y z squared plus c. So we're just going to take that function and plug in our t into it uh, for our rt here. We're going to use our rt and just plug that in for that function. So we can get it all in terms of t. So then we can think of our t being our lower bound and upper bound. So that's what we're going to do next. So then... Let's do part B. So here we go. So this is the same function here that we found on the previous page in a previous video. And all we're going to do is plug in our components for x, y, and z. And that's going to come from our rt here. So that doesn't change. This is our x, this is our y, this is our z. And I think for this process, you just mostly have to get comfortable with it and realize if I have a potential function and I have to find an f dot tds or an f dot dr or an f dot r prime t, I can just use this fundamental theorem for our line integrals. So that's the beauty of this. So now my integral is still going from 1 to e. And I'm just going to write this all out. So now when I do my ft really here or I'll call it frt yeah let me call it that there we go that's better then that's going to give me so for x I'm going to plug in t squared so that's an x squared so that's a t squared squared so that's going to be a t to the fourth and then it's going to be ln of y which is my y is t, so that's going to be a t there. Then I have plus, and then my y is a t, so that's going to be a t times a z 
is a t as well, so that's t squared. So t squared minus t is t cubed. So that's what we end up with for our FRT. And then we're just gonna plug in our upper bound minus our lower bound here. So our upper bound, I'm just plugging in E for my T. That's here. So that's gonna be E to the fourth, L and a E, plus E cubed. And then it's going to be minus the lower bound, which is 1. So it's going to be 1 to the 4th. So I'm not going to put that in there. But I'm going to have ln of 1 plus 1 cubed. So now ln of 1, I hope you know, equals 0. If not, you know now. Um, so really what I have here is e to the 4th. And ln of e is actually 1 because these cancel, and the exponent here is 1, so that would be 1, so it would just be e to the 4th, plus e cubed. And then for the rest of this, again, that ln of 1 is 0, so I have minus 1. So if you look at the answer here, that was pretty quick once I had the potential function. And if you notice the previous answer that we had is that's e to the 4th plus e cubed, minus 1, e to the 4th plus e cubed minus 1. So it was very quick once I had the potential function. So if I'm given that, this makes this problem very easy. And this would be done by hand. If I said by hand on this, this would show by hand all this process here. This one would too. No, this one wouldn't because I'd have to do the integrals by hand as well. So this one would be a lot longer problem. So just kind of remember that as you go through these that if I'm given a potential function and I'm told to find f dot dr, then maybe I should think about this fundamental theorem for line integrals. Okay, so there it is.